Hey, Room 19 Hornets. Welcome to day 26, you guys. Um, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We kind of had a rainy Friday, and I think it's looking to be pretty nice, or it was looking to be pretty nice for this weekend. Um, so I hope you guys got out, enjoyed the beautiful weather, and are ready to get started on our Monday work. So um, you'll notice this is a little bit different. We don't have an official writing activity today, but I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So today we really have reading, science, and math, with just a little bit of writing today. Um, so for reading, you'll see here um, that one of the things you can read is our STEM Scopedia. You guys might remi remember this from other science units. Um, once it loads, it is something we usually read through as a class. Um, and you'll notice, of course, it's really, really long. So if you're starting to read this on your own and you're thinking, um, this, is, this is hard for me to read, or this seems like too much for me to read, Maybe ask mom and dad when would work for them to read through it with you because this is a lot and I do normally read through this with you guys. You're not reading it on your own. So it's okay if you need mom and dad. Okay, so you're reading through this. You're kind of working through the little activities here. You read, 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 read. And then when you get down to this page, do not do it. Do not do it yet. You are going to do it during science. Okay, and then come keep going and down to here. Now, you don't actually have to do absolutely all of this. I would say the most important pages to read through with mom and dad or read through on your own would be the first one, two, three. If you keep going, that's great, but those first three pages are the most important. And today's goal is, while you're reading this, that you understand that when you have objects, they all have properties. We talked about that last week. A shoe is um, pretty flexible, but it's also smooth. And as much as objects all have properties, other objects have similar properties. And we can organize these into groups. So today's main goal is going to be about grouping objects together that have similar properties. So you'll see as you read through what I'm talking about. Um, if you are wanting to though, oops, sorry, you can save this to read during science time and just read something of your choice for 20 minutes, whether it's Raz Kids, ABC Mouse, or um, like a book of your choice. If you are trying to read through this on your own and it's too hard, I would say save it for science time, wait till mom and dad are available and read a book of your choice for reading, okay? So make your choice if you're reading this and it feels okay. If you're reading this and it feels okay, you can go ahead and read that during your reading time. If you're reading it um, and it's too hard and mom and dad are busy, make a different reading choice for now and read for 20 minutes. So go ahead and hit pause, get reading, and I'll meet you back here for science. All right, welcome back. And actually, I did say uh, you'll be back here for science. I also wanted to let you know I said there's no real writing, but I do want you to spend a little bit of time um, writing today just because that's what we do in second grade. We don't just skip writing every day, so I'm going to have you um, take about 10 minutes each day to write. You can write in a journal. You can write an all about book. Just take 10 minutes to write. If you want to do that now because you just finished reading, you can go ahead and do that, or you can do it at some point today, okay? So if you're wanting to write now, go ahead and hit pause, meet me back here for science for real. But if you're wanting to wait on that and do it later, we can hop right into science. All right, so for science today, we're talking about properties and states of matter. So you are going to be watching this video on properties of materials. Again, I'm not going to click on it because it plays right away. Um, but guys, really watch this video and really listen carefully because it does a great job of describing what you need to know for today. After you've watched that video, read the STEMScopedia with mom and dad if you haven't read it already, and then you get to do this little activity here over properties and states of matter. So what you're going to do is you are going to collect three objects in your house. Of course, it says out of your desk or your backpack. You don't have to do that right now. So really, any three objects in your house. Um, you can sketch and write out the objects. And then you're going to describe its properties. So let's say here I wanted to do it on a sock. So I draw a sock, I write sock. What are its properties? For me, I would write down it is flexible. It's, mine are all black, so black. It is soft. 
It is um, a fancy word, porous. If I were to put it in water, it would absorb the water. Um, so after I jot those down for each of my objects, I'm then looking to find an object that is similar. So if I had a sock and I wrote down all those words, an object that is similar might be another item of clothing, or I'm even thinking like a towel would be similar because it also absorbs water, it's flexible, it's soft, um, and I'm gonna jot down that object. When you are picking your object, if mom and dad were to ask you, well, why are the objects similar? It should be because one of its properties or even a few of its properties are the same. So that's why a sock to me is similar to a towel because it's um, soft, it's flexible, and it absorbs water, it's porous, which I wrote those three here. So you'll do that for three objects. Please don't pick a sock. You guys can pick other objects um, and get started on that. Go ahead and hit pause on your video and meet me back here for the next science activity. Ready, set, go. All right, guys, welcome back to our next science activity. It's now game time. So you're actually going to be playing a game. It's kind of like heads up or headbands. You are going to cut these out. And you're going to put them in a bowl and you're going to play this game with someone else. You're going to take turns. You're going to take an item out of the bowl and you're going to put it on your forehead and the person you're playing with is going to describe properties of that object to try to just help you guess what it is. You're going to take turns. So for the lemon, um, you could put it is like, it's round, it is yellow, it's sour, even taste can be a property. You might say it's a solid with some liquid inside. You think of any way you can use to describe it. It's gonna be kind of tricky because you're wanting to use properties of that object. But it's really fun and I hope you guys enjoy it and have some laughs after, over what people are guessing. Um, and once you're finished with that, um, you'll be moving on to math. So go ahead and um, press pause, print those out if you need to, or just cut them up and play with someone else in your house. And welcome back for math. For math today, it's I'm kind of excited because it's a combination of measurement and then addition and subtraction. So we're kind of combining everything we've been working on so far in distance learning and what we learned earlier in the school year. So first, um, if you're doing the math activity, remember you have the choice between the math activity or the math pages. Um, if you're doing the math pages, just hang tight. I'm going to go over this activity and then I'm going to explain the pages. So for the activity, you're going to watch this brain pop video on... Perimeter. Perimeter is measuring the outside of an object. Um, if you need to log in here, which you probably will, the username and password are both Park Hill 2020. Once you've watched the video, you're going to pick three objects in your house and you're going to measure the perimeter around each object and record the objects and perimeters on a piece of paper. So probably your notebook would be a good place. And if you need to print a ruler, you can, or you can use a ruler around your house. Okay, so if you're going to do that activity, go ahead and press pause. Um, well, actually, don't. Don't do that yet. Because don't forget, um, too, whenever you're adding your perimeter, whenever you're adding your sides together, you'll see what I mean after you watch this video. Don't forget about our strategies that we use in the classroom. Number bonds, doubles facts, um, making 10, all these strategies can help us add lots of little numbers together. Okay, don't forget those strategies and now press pause and get started. And if you are joining me for the Envision pages today, let's click on those, open them up. You will also be working on perimeter, so I would say maybe watch the video Two, even if you're on the math pages, watch that little video and then come here. And you are going to be writing an equation to help solve each problem. So the distance around the baseball card is the perimeter of the baseball card. Just so you know, um, if you see here, you'll notice only two of the sides are labeled with measurements. But if you know how long this side is, which is 10 centimeters, and you come over here, you'll notice, wow, this side is the same as this side. So you could even write over here 10 centimeters because that's going to be this side. They match, they're equal. And then if you know this side is seven centimeters, then you know this side is, say it with me, seven centimeters. So you'll see here, they created this first equation for you, 10 plus seven plus 10 
plus 7 to find the total. And now, I don't know about you, but I would not be doing, well, 10 plus 7 is 17, and 17 plus 10 is 27. And 27 plus 7 is, because that's really hard. That's not easy math. And we're mathematicians who find the quickest way to solve the problem. And look at these equa this equation here, and I bet you're noticing a strategy that you could use. I bet you're noticing, like me, that there are a few doubles facts that I could use to solve. I see here there's two tens and there's two sevens. So I could do 10 plus 10 equals 20, 7 plus 7 equals 14, and 20 plus 14 is much easier to solve than all of these. So don't forget to use those strategies, doubles facts, near or making 10, number bonds, whatever strategy you need to make it a little bit easier. So you're doing the same thing for this one on your own. So remember those strategies. Same thing here, same thing here. You'll notice this one's a little bit different because it's how much longer, and you're noticing, don't forget those words, when you see than or longer, you might think, oh, am I going to add or subtract? When we think of the Greg Tang six-step framework, we know when we see words like than, it's a comparison. So think about if you're going to be adding or subtracting. And then here, you're thinking through, well, if this side's 20 and this side's 20, what am I missing? This one's going to be really, really tricky. You might need mom and dad's help on this one, and that's okay. And then we're moving into the problem solving, the word problem. So really maybe try the six-step framework on this one, okay? And they even made some of the models for you. So use what you know. Um, if you need help, of course, ask mom and dad. You guys are such amazing mathematicians. I'm not worried that you will find a strategy that works with mom and dad's help or on your own. And then, of course, some fluency practice. You can play addition clash or get on Greg Tang and play for at least 10 minutes or longer if you want. And a friendly reminder, if you did not do writing earlier, to do that. Okay, so that's it. Um, please, on Google Classroom, send me your, a picture of your math work today. I just like to see it and check in with you guys. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a marvelous Monday. Um, I'm excited for you guys to get started today. And I can't wait to see your work. Ta-ta.